Hey, it's late March. We're up in northern Minnesota, and this is like an awesome time to fish for panfish. The lakes are melting down. We hardly have any snow left on the ice. Water's starting to go down, and the big panfish are on the move. And typically, the lakes where you get them out in the deep basins, they're not there anymore. They're moving up into the shallows. And if you can find green weeds, you'll usually find fish. It's a great time of year to ice fish. And with the water pouring through the ice, that just breathes new life into the water and you get this great push of fish up shallow. Sometimes the fish can even be inches under the ice. So Mike and I are gonna show you how we go about finding panfish at that special late ice period. So what we like to do is we'll, we'll drill a number of holes on this flat. So I'm gonna be the guy cutting and then Mike is gonna follow behind me with the camera and we're not even gonna let wet a line until we see a fish. Yeah, so typically it's been our experience that when these fish are up shallow and they're in the weeds, bluegills and crappies are very curious fish along with bass, but if they're there, you see them. So I've been a huge fan of just using this little underwater Aquaview micro camera and just going around and following behind Jeremy and looking for the fish. And we won't even like drop a line like he said until we see the fish, but if they're not there, we're not gonna fish. Ooh, a jack. Nice jack. Ooh, real five, six pound jack just cruised right through. Huh, cool. Wow, he was a lurker. Kind of came out of the shadows. And of course, all the sunfish are gone now. So that's probably another factor mixed in here too is where you find the panfish, you find everything. The bass are gonna be here, the pike are gonna be here. So I'm sure with a handful of nice pike roaming around in with these panfish, they're pushing them around as too, so. I was gonna tell you to come over here, Jeremy, but the, the jack came through and scared them all. No, he did, huh? Yep, so we'll just go see if we can find where they move to next. So we've still got a lot of ice out on the out on the lake and we had a cold night last night, so everything firmed up. But one thing I gotta tell you is just amazing and I fought a number of technologies just because you get comfortable with something, but it's the lithium, this is an electric auger. It's a 40 volt auger and I've got this flight light bit on here. This thing is insane on how smooth it is to operate. You don't have to let things warm up. And the other deal with it is too, it's basically like each battery is essentially a tank of gas. So for most applications, I can go out ice fishing, even late ice like this, where we've still got a ton of ice. We can drill tons of holes, fish lots of spots, and I'm good to go. It's just awesome. Watch this. And this bit just makes it so light to carry around. I mean, if you wanted to walk out when you get in that late ice situation and you can't take machines, you just want to bring a sled or a rod in your depth finder, it's nothing. You can see it's a synthetic bit, spins fast. Man, you can just rip through holes with this thing. Yeah, this time of year, there's a lot of lakes that the weeds die off on, but if you're on a clearer lake where there's a little better light penetration, the weeds will stay green all winter. And typically that's where you find the fish. Now late in the year like this, sometimes the fish aren't actually in the weeds, but above them. So we might be fishing in 10 to 15 feet of water, but we might only be fishing, you know, five feet under the ice. The fish are up high, so. And I'm just gonna keep following behind Jeremy until we find these little buggers. Oh yeah, here we go, Jer. There's fish. We got them. They're up, they're out, there we go. Yep, I see them off in the distance. They're- Sunnies, crappies. A little of both. Ooh. There's there's shadows in the background, but they are here. Sweet. So I am, oh, there's one looking right at me right there. Hi. Little sunfish. One in the background. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, they just, like they just appear. That's they just cool. show up. So, so we've checked like five or six holes on the flat and didn't find anything. So we just keep moving until we find them. Now the holes we, just cut over there, they might be there in 15 minutes or so. So they move a lot this time of the year, but these fish are a few feet off the bottom and I'm gonna go poke a, a look at a couple more and see if you can catch a couple of these. I'll try these. Devils. And the other nice thing too, is when we're in the weeds like this, a lot of times with your depth finder, you drop it down and it might look like it's weeds when in fact it's uh, fish. So it's pretty cool for Mike to truth that and know what's, what's behind. So I'm gonna check out the size of the fish in this hole and see if indeed there are some nice panfish here. Oh, it's a little smaller sunfish, just kind of pecking. 
Usually when one shows up, there's more, more over follow. here, Jeremy. Way more over there. Yep. Wow. Got a little transducer tangling going on. Not bad. Sweet. Oh, there's some way. See now, I got the directional on this. So we're wherever northwest is from where I'm at, Jeremy. Ooh. Northwest would be that way. Yep. Under Rich. Rich is sitting right on top of a bunch of fish, but. According to this camera, northwest there's a bunch of fish and I can see them higher in the water column. Actually, they're coming over to my camera right now. Yeah, I am right now. What do you got over there? I think I got a nice sunny favorite. Oh, nice crappie. Really? Perfect. Yeah, look at that. All right. Paying so we're up, talking about. Mike. Was he up high? It was, yeah. I'm in eight feet here, and that one was probably four feet down. Okay. So, cool. Good deal. Yeah, they're moving nice. around in here a lot, aren't they? Yeah, they are. I'm going to let this guy go. So, it may look like Jeremy's having all the fun here catching the fish, and I'm just walking around like a like a moron with a camera, but I enjoy this as much as I do the fishing because it's showing you where the fish are for one, and two, you get to see what they're doing, you know? So it's like, you know that, Ooh, that they're running nice high fish. over the weeds. You don't have to go down as far. And if I put the camera down here next to his jig, I could see how they were reacting to it too. So right. despite not fishing, I'm still kind of fishing. <laughs> Well, it's fun to just see what the habitat like. It's fun yeah. to watch the fish, yeah. man. It really is. You know, the thing is, is like where this hole is where he's fishing, there's weeds. There's like two to three foot of growth of some old coontail and some cabbage. If we cut a hole in there 10, 15 feet, there's no weeds. If we go out behind another 20 feet, it gets about three feet deeper and deeper weeds. So there's like a, a little spot where these fish are staging along. And it's like we've just cut holes for the, yep. what, what, 50 yards yeah. along this and just kind of funneling back and forth along it. So I'm just going to keep snooping with this thing That's while you keep idea. catching fish. And there's one. That's a decent fish too, Mikey. You got a good one? Maybe. Ooh. Sure okay. is feeling like it. Got him. Oh, oh, nice crappie. Decent crappie. I like when you get the mix. Nice. Gosh, those are good eaters. I know we're going to get some big ones. Oh, there's one right away. Look at that. Huh. They were just a little wad came through. This feels like a decent, yeah, not a bad bluegill. Big male. So, yeah, they're moving around fast. And this would be a, down the hatch. Holy cow, did he eat that? There we go. I am going to let that guy go and see if I can get some females. Actually, if you're bluegill fishing on a lake and you want to keep uh, the size structure good in the lake, this is the kind of fish you want to let go, a bigger male fish. And you know, the size depends on the lake. Like this could be a big one for this lake, but other lakes they might be 10 inches. But this is the guy you want to let go um, for spawning and keep the smaller females if you have the opportunity to sort them out. So one thing you see this time of year is fish move a lot. I mean, when you put the camera down, a lot of times they're not just sitting there, they're going by point A to point B. So when you get into an area like this, a uh, good thing to do is once you see where the fish are in a few different holes, just cut a bunch of other holes tighter in that circle. So you have 10, 20 holes that you can go hop to hop to hop from. So you're not like cutting one here or there throughout the day. You've got the holes cut and then you can just keep moving around. Ah, not bad. It'd be a good keeper if we were keeping fish.
you know what i'm gonna let them go we're catching lots maybe a little more later in the day that kind of the cool thing is when you're when you're doing this slate season stuff too is like we're in 10 feet right here but a lot of times i'm only fishing three or four feet down and oftentimes that's where we catch the crappies like that was a bigger gill but a lot of times more active more aggressive fish and usually the crappies come much higher up i'm seeing lots of fish in the bottom four feet but i'm keeping my bait way up and hoping to select for some crappies more aggressive fish and often you get big bluegills up there too so that's my little secret right now mike there we go that might be a decent one nice gotta do a little sorting but oh cool great sunfish oh come here come here come here perfect huh that's what we're after just a beautiful buck sunfish such a great time of year to just get out where it's warm you're not walking through tons of snow it's not slushy and the fish get super super aggressive right now what i'm what i'm basically doing is i'm just fishing plastic this is a little tungsten probe jig on here a little red red imitator it's keeping a lot of the smaller fish off i'm not having to bait and then i'm just trying to play keep away if i feel those little drr, drr, i just take it away and then wait for that good thunk and boom we're gonna let this one go Cut perch, pumpkin seeds, sunnies, crappies, the whole works. Pretty sweet. And boom. That's fun when you get loaded. It's just amazing. Another crappie. How these fish move though, like. I was in holes right next right next to me, catching, you know, nothing. You'll catch a bunch of fish like this, and then all of a sudden they disappear. You just gotta move a couple feet, and that's why it really does pay to drill lots of holes close to each other, even if they're only 20 feet away. I mean, just picture if you're fishing in open water, the difference between casting off the front of the boat or off the back of the boat, what a difference that can be and how many fish you're catching. And it's the same thing with ice fishing. You can just be a few feet off and not on the fish, but then move a few feet and bam, you're on them. And I think that's another crappie. And it is. Sweet, landed in a nice school of crappies. It's kind of cool being out here hearing the geese fly oh, over, yeah. the big swans flying over, you know. In theory, there's no turning back. Right. <laughs> to, to this stuff melting, but all right. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna cut a couple holes on either side of you so when they decide to move we can hop on them Look absolutely at that. Jeez. just right away instant maybe a better gill oh yeah nice blue gill oh yeah that's a Perfect. good one yeah it's got the neascus you can see that see those black spots neascus is what that's called and he's loaded with it but not a bad blue gill so the setup that i'm using uh is really specifically for panfish on here I've got, this is a little 750 size reel from Daiwa. This is a sweet little reel. A lot of pan fishermen, of course, like the 500s. Walleye guys tend to like the 1000s, trout guys the 2000s. But it's, it's, the 750 is a sweet size if you like crappies, panfish. I personally like just that little bit larger size spool. I fish a lot of mono and fluorocarbon. That bigger spool just lets that line handle a little bit, little bit better. And of course, it's a Daiwa spinning reel, so it's just got a, just an incredible drag. And I'm actually fishing with a Croy Custom Ice right now, a panfish rod. And you can see the, the tip on this thing is just perfect. It's balanced for that little tungsten jig. So when I'm working and I can easily see the bites if something pulls it down. And like with crappies, a lot of times that rod just slightly loaded. When they bump it, they push it up. I'll see the, I'll see the up bite as well. So this little combo right here is just deadly for fishing crappies and sunnies late ice. Oh, that's a good one. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. That would make anybody happy. Sweet. Yep. Up high, that one was only, I don't know, four feet down and 10. Something now, if like you that. were going to keep that's it. fish for the plate, that would be a good that's one a right there. Should one. we, yep. you're going to keep a couple? Uh, or? I'm good, but okay. if you want No, some, I'm good. That's yep. fine. I usually keep tons of fish. I so. usually keep and kill tons <laughs> of fish. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, I'm going to yep. let him go. Yeah, we got time still, so yep. Do that. The um, one thing I've done in this case it is just one after the other, and that's like so many pan fishing situations, is I've taken the barb off of this little tungsten tubby jig that was once a, a probe jig, 
And another thing that you can do with it to save time to get that bait to hang horizontal is tie a loop knot as opposed to like say a, you know just an improved clinch or a trilene knot. That just a, you don't have to take the time to always readjust where the knot is sitting and the bait sits perfectly horizontal. So a couple things to help you when you're in a flurry to catch more fish when they're down there because they move all the time. I'm zooming up. Oh there we go. That's a good fish, whatever it is. Yep. Mikey. Nice tangle town. What I got here. Put the back reel on just in case. It might be a bass. Big crappie. Please be a big crappie. Big crappie. Is it? Yeah. Sweet. That's kind of what we came for right oh, there. Oh yeah, that's a sweet fish. The butte. Yeah. So that's the thing about these guys. They are just on the move. Like Jeremy said, you just need to keep moving around and wait for them to swim by you. So yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna let this one go, but. Now, when it comes to this late season pan fishing deal, of course, live bait's a great option. Wax worms, zero larva or maggots are great, but plastics are a go-to in a lot of situations. And tungsten is a big deal as well. So when I'm out here, I generally carry a handful of plastics and some tungsten jigs. One of my go-tos that I've just been having so much luck with since it's come out is this little tungsten jig. It's called a probe. It's got this little probe tail. It's like a perfect bloodworm Im imitator. Crappies, perch, and sunnies just love this little, little beauty right here. But one of the big things with tungsten, if you haven't fished with it yet, even for the shallow water, is of course tungsten is much more dense than lead. And it's very valuable, of course, if you're fishing in deep water, but also the shallow water, if you're hole hopping, there's slush, it punches right through the slush. And also it gives you really good feel. It also shows up great on your depth finder. So tungsten has many advantages and these days it's essentially all that I ever fish with. So the blood worm imitator for me is a go-to, but Mike carries a big selection of plastics with him as well that he finds success with. When I come out here fishing for late season pan fish, I bring a little bit of everything, probably way more than I need. So I've got a little box filled with a variety of different styles and sizes of tungsten jigs that I tip with either plastics or worms. I've got some of the normal lead type jigs, both horizontal and vertical as options and colors. So again, you know, way more than a person needs, but um, a little tub with wax worms, a little tub with maggots, and then a variety of plastics, and they come in a ton of different shapes and sizes now, anything from mayfly copies to bug copies to worm copies to minnow copies. So it's kind of cool to have all these options now for plastics because sometimes plastics will save you a lot of time when you're fishing. You don't have to rebait, and they often work as good or better than a live bait. And bonk. Another smaller sunfish. And it looks like the crappies have moved on. A bunch of fish in this spot though. So kind of what we're looking for for these, you know, late season pan fish locations is weed flats and they're often adjacent to depressions. So for example, let's say you were fishing up, you know, it was a big weed flat that was eight, 10 feet deep and you found a 12 foot depression on it. A lot of times you'll find the fish in that depression midwinter, but as the, you know, as the season progresses, the water starts running through the holes, you end up finding the fish a lot more in the vertical weed cover. And also if there's green weeds, that's a, that's a big factor for finding them too. Another great place to look would be next to basins where for example, you'd catch crappies, you know, midwinter. So some, you know, those 20 to 40 foot basins that are adjacent to weed beds. And a lot of times it's just that vertical cover that's such a big deal for holding these fish. But generally something near depression is a big deal. And I'll show you what like our spot is on the map. So you can see this is the, the spot that we're fishing right now. We've got this 25 foot hole out here. We catch crappies December, January, February out in this deeper basin here. But now we're finding the fish basically they've been running along this whole edge here. And of course it's a channel that leads into another part of the lake. But we're not getting the fish so far up in the channel right now. It's just been pretty much around the perimeter of this. We did not see fish on this edge, but this edge right here was, was holding numbers numbers of fish. So those little depressions are great. And I've got a feeling if we sneak over into this little deeper spot over here too, we're gonna end up getting into a pile of fish. So that's really what you're looking for. Those, those weed beds and this, you can see I've got the depth highlight here. 
I'm set up from basically eight to 12 feet. That's the range that we're fishing is in green and then anything less than that is, is in bright red. So having that feature on the hummingbird unit like that really allows you to see what, uh, what areas are most likely to produce fish. So, so I kind of switched up tactics here a little bit. It's getting later in the day cooled off a little bit and it's kind of getting to be more crappie time. The bluegills have kind of shut down, but this is usually when the big crappie start to bite. And I kind of changed up my uh, tackle. I've got a 48 inch black ice legend St. Croix rod um, with six pound line and I got a three pound leader. And what I'm doing is going hole to hole, kind of hole hopping. I've got a plastic on, I've got a tungsten with a plastic. It's about 11 feet. I'm fishing about seven feet down and I've got a spring bobber on the end of this rod. So no graph, no locator, just tight line and going to hole to hole, fishing, letting the spring do the work. And basically what I'm looking for is a couple active fish. So I'm gonna go hit a hole, sit there for 30 seconds to a minute, nothing hits it, go to the next hole. So just covering a ton of water. These crappies are moving around so much here. They just don't stick around. So this is the best way to go catch a crappie at this time of the night. Oh geez, there's one. Woo! Now that's more like it. That's what we're looking for. This one feels a little better, a, Jer. You got a bass? Oh, I got it in the weeds. No, it's not a bass. It's a huge crappie. Oh, I'm on. Look at this guy. Now that oh. is what we came here for. <laughs> Stuff like this. This lake is known for fish up to 15 inches and it just kind of took till the end of the day for them to kind of turn on and get going. But just, I know, right? <laughs> that thing is It's huge. like that is a trophy fish right there. Look at that thing. So. That's a, that's a good eater. That's like, an, I got like an 11 inch here. Look at that, <laughs> I can eat it. That is so yeah, cool. So anyhow, uh, given that it's, we got another couple weeks of ice left, this is like the best time to get out and get after these panfish. So. Oh, it's comfortable. The fish are shallow and we're just bouncing around right now, yep. hold a hole. Don't fish need to wear gloves and catch a lot of fish. All right, Oops. we're gonna let them go, so. Cool, that's sweet fish, All right. man.